All righty, folks, and what you just heard there was Glenn Clark from his brand new CD, You Tell Me. And I have Glenn Clark here in the studio. Hi, Lacey. Hey, Glenn. Thank you so much for making the drive over. Thanks for having us. And, happy to be here. And thank you so much for agreeing to headline the 10th Annual k Win Fort Worth Booth Fest. I'm really looking, we're really looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun, and we're, we're excited about that. So I, some of your band is in here with you guys. You want to introduce yourselves on the mics? Yes, I've got. Oh, yeah, I'm Jim Milan, a bass player, <laughs> and uh, John Bryant, drums, and co-producer. Yes, thank you very much. And then there is one other member of your band that's not here with us tonight. The guitar player Sam Swain okay. couldn't make it. Okay, but um, you guys will be with Glenn over there. Yes, uh, yes. Sunday yes. at the. Absolutely. 10th Annual Cane Win Fort Worth Blues Fest. So, for people that have been living under a rock and maybe don't know a lot about you, um, I'm going to give a little brief, just touch on some things here. So, um, you grew up in Fort Worth? Yes. Uh, your brother played in a band with Dovett McClinton as the singer? Is that? No, no, not my brother. Okay. Uh, 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 my best friend's brother. Gotcha, okay. Whose, whose last name happened to be Clark as well. Oh, gotcha. We were, there was no relation. Okay. So, and that's how you met Delbert? That's and, how I met Delbert. And then y'all end up uh, moving out to California. You and Delbert did a couple of albums together, had a duo thing. Yes. Thing going on. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it's so hard because I could spend all two hours of my show just talking about your amazing career. But I'm just going to touch on a few things here because we don't have that. Um, in your career out there, you played and toured with Chris Christopherson, with uh, Willie Nelson, with Bonnie Raitt. Um, well, the, the, Willie, the Willie Nelson, it was Willie and Chris. And gotcha. Those tours were. Uh, uh, Bobby Nelson always played piano with Willie. There you go. There but you I go. played with Willie and Chris on those shows. There you go. And That's then you part. also played with um, Jim Aykroyd. With the Sacred uh, Dan Heart, Aykroyd, Dan, I'm in sorry, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and um, in the Sacred Heart Blues Band, right? Where um, basically that's the Blues Brothers Band going around playing. You opened all the House of Blues, correct? Uh, and and uh, then you were musical director for Jim's TV show, correct? Uh -huh. So um, that's a lot, and that's just touching on some stuff there, folks. <laughs> but if you didn't know who this man was, that gives you a better idea now who we're talking about. Uh, but now you're back here, living living over uh, over Fort Worth Waves. Yes, ma'am. And you got this great new CD out. So let's talk about the CD, and let's talk about um, how the CD came about. So a big a big thing of what you do, in addition to doing that, to um, playing keyboards and singing, is songwriting. And yes. um, so there's a, I do want to mention, if you can get your hands on the new Buddy magazine that just hit the streets, I was fortunate enough to do an interview with you and write an article in there about it. And one of the things that I really took away from our first meeting and doing that was that how much you love the art of songwriting. Yes, I, that's the process of songwriting is what, that's my favorite thing about the business. And it's, you know, it's, it's unrestricted in any way, it's free. And you can, you know, whatever comes in your mind, you can write a song about it. And and, and so I love that. It, it's like creating puzzles in a way, you know, and figuring out a puzzle. But it's it's something I've always loved, and, and I get a lot of joy out of it. And that is such a cool thing to me. And um, we talked about this a little before, but again, like I said, for those of you that are listening on the radio, um, we're kind of going back and touching on some stuff Glenn and I have already talked about in this article, but your songwriting process differs. So you don't necessarily start with a tune or a lyric or it's just kind of how it comes to you, right? Right. It, 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 it's, I don't have a formula. I mean, I, I do some days decide I'm going to work today and I try to, you know, I'll try to write a song or I'll work on a song, but a lot of times it's you know, an idea will pop in my head and I'll say, ooh, you know, and then I'll work on that and that's how it comes about. It's usually, I, I, I don't try to manufacture a song, you know. I, I, uh, you, you can't force a flower to bloom. So I, uh, I try to let it come to me and, uh, and fortunately I, I don't have to be in a hurry about it. <laughs> well, and this is something a lot of people don't understand because there is this romantic notion of the muse has to hit you. But songwriting is like all crafting and all arts, is that you have to just keep doing it. Yes. That is a big part of it. So how did the songs come about that you chose for the new CD? What's the story behind that? 
Well, John and Jim really helped me with that, and in the course of playing them, we, we, they kind of, we, we kind of just went through it and say, oh, this works, and this, you know, let's do this song, and and uh, and we probably have a lot of songs we didn't do, but I, I'm real happy to, with the ones that we did decide to do, and these guys are the guys that really ramrodded it. And I would be still sitting on my duff over there. <laughs> the, the, the instigators are what we have uh, flagging you right now, is that it? Yeah, we, pull, we push a little bit, but I mean, <laughs> It, that's just to get it done, and, and that's not a knock. It's just that it's it's a lengthy process. Sure, it is. It takes sure a is. lot of time, and, and uh, we had the luxury of Glenn's got his own studio, so we had the luxury of taking our time, which lets you come back a week later and rethink what you did, and sometimes add parts. And you know, we didn't get too carried away with that, but we weren't under the gun of a of a, a clock and a sure. And a, Sure, we booked this much thing, time and we have to get it so done in this much time. So it really, yeah, so it really yeah. opened up the process. It really lets you kind of... And so um, explain to people a little bit how you guys know each other. That's a good... Well, Glenn and I met through Delbert McClinton. Okay. And I was playing drums with Delbert and uh, Glenn's record, uh, Delbert and Glenn, the third record that you've mm -hmm. done, had just come out. They were just finishing that and <clears throat> I was a... Uh, kind of a temporary drummer for Delbert because I live in Dallas and they're in Nashville, but it worked out that I could play with him some. And so they were finishing that record and Glenn came on one of the gigs and uh, Delbert introduced us. And we immediately, it was like we knew each other because we both went to North Texas. And, and once you are in that world, uh -huh. all those musicians that go, went to that school, you know, they know each other and they keep an eye out for each other. And so we just had a million stories to outdo each other with immediately. <laughs> and what year was that? That was around uh, 20... Oh, the 2015, 15? I think, was okay. when yeah, they were... That's right. Okay. 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 And I know you've known Jim a little longer, so what is your history of um, oh, knowing... Yeah, we, <laughs> we go pretty far back. I, mean, I, I played with the... How much time? <laughs> right, right. I played the Jim Jumpers in just the late 70s. And... Uh, Sumter Bruton was in that group, and Sumter's brother Stephen was tight with Glenn, and, and Stephen and Glenn were playing in Chris's band at that time. So we had that, and for, honestly, even before that. And then later in the 80s, um, at some point in the 80s, uh, Glenn had a band with Stephen and Danny Timms, and it was called Little Whisper in the Rumor. It's a great band. They played more in California, but when they would come to Texas, they'd get the Texas rhythm section, mm -hmm. mainly me and a drummer. And uh, I'm trying to remember who West Star I think played some of those gigs. Uh, actually, I think maybe Davy Crockett started out David on the original dates. You're right, and then, David uh, Crockett. Our uh, rest of the man, I'm from yeah. Sweet guy. You remember and, and, than yeah, me, yeah, right? and, and and I think in Austin we used West. Uh -huh. that down. Anyway, we played some dates, I, and I played with Stephen a lot too back then, off and on when he was home. Mm -hmm. We were all in Fort Worth at the time, so and back and forth from those years on, you know. I mean, Delbert's boat, we've gotten together just to visit, or just for whatever reason, but we hooked up on this project, um, kind of talked about, well, let's just play, and then maybe we can, you know, play some gigs, and kind of felt that out for a little while, and then it kind of shifted from that to the recording, and then it went full blast recording because it was coming together so nicely, you know. I thought, well, man, we got to get this done. You know, this is this is pretty strong. We got to get it. And it is a very strong CD, and it's had some good um, airplay all over the place, yeah, and yeah. it's done some chart action. It is. It has. It has done well on the on what's Roots Music charts, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, it stayed in the top. Well, the contemporary blues charts. I think it stayed in the top ten for most of the time, last two or three weeks anyway, and mm -hmm. and it stayed number one or two in the Texas Roots charts, which is a pretty good feat because there's some interesting records on that list there are yeah. there's some some pretty um impressive artists yeah, 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 on that yeah. so that you're it's against getting a lot of airplay which yeah. is really nice it, yeah. it's, it's it's great and, and it and it should <laughs> yeah. and if, I, if i might um yeah. just back on the songwriting thing a little bit that's been the whole thing is glenn's songwriting when we first got together and had no notion about why we just know we will and we'll play and have some fun mm -hmm. and he kept bringing these songs out the, some that, of course, are on the CD, mm -hmm. but there's so many of them they never stop coming, and <laughs> and each song, which is a great problem to have, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and Jim, each song, Jim and I would just kind of look at each like, man, that's a great song, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, well, we kind of need to rehearse with this one. We'll listen to this, man. That's a great song, and you can't resist just going into it. And, yeah. And that's that was the spirit that that carried us through making this record. 
not, oh, we're going to have an end goal or anything like that. It was like, let's let the process just carry us through. And these songs were the centerpiece of that. And we originally started out just trying to, to demo the songs yeah. and document yeah. the songs. That's sure. what it originally started. I right. said, you know, I need you guys to come help me document these songs. Right. Sure. And it went into, let's make a record. Yeah. Yeah. And how did Sam end up involved in this? And John? I've known Sam. He, Sam is a great guitar player oh, and is. luthier. Mm -hmm. um, just a great musician. And uh, he and I worked together on film projects from 10 or 15 years ago. And... and uh, Man, he's just a go-to. Whatever you need, he knows the style. He knows the history behind the style. Plays with heart and authenticity. You know, and it has a wonderful wry sense of humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We love it. Yeah, Which is always helpful in a band, yeah. I find. It helps. <laughs> <laughs> it does. If everybody can laugh a yeah. little bit yeah. when oh, yeah. you're doing stuff. Oh, yeah. So, um, speaking of styles, there's a. A bunch of different styles on the CD because it kind of encompasses your long career with a lot of different uh, styles of music. So talk a little bit about some of the different influences that are shown that show up on here. Well, Delbert is probably uh, one of the biggest. Delbert McClinton, mm -hmm. and then of course the all all the. Uh, this is Texas. I think you can just say Delbert, and we know. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Like and and if you and if people don't know, that's sad. <laughs> Not okay with that, so <laughs> I agree with that, and uh, and really, it's I, I've always liked a lot of different kinds of music, and if it's good music, I like it exactly. And, and I don't, uh, so I don't like to be confined to any one style. My main influence was early blues guys, you know, uh, Sonny Boy, Little Walter, though, a lot of those guys, but I also liked. There's some really good rock. I mean, I you know I, I wasn't limited to just blues, so I, I didn't want to paint myself into a corner writing songs. And whatever came out came out, and I didn't try to say, oh, we're going to make this fit in a category. Sure, that sure. That was the process for me. Just let it be what it is. So the and not worry about if it makes any money or not. They, well, yeah. So the uh, <laughs> the one we played right before you guys came on was when the time is right that you co-wrote with Steve Cropper. Right. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that song. <laughs> well. We, uh, Steve and I got together at his place in Nashville, and uh, and I ha had that idea for a title, and uh, and he came up with that first verse right away, and it just went really quick after that, and we put the, I, we wrote that thing and, and demoed it within you know two or three hours. Wow! And it was it was a real treat for me to get to get to work with Steve. I'd met him before. But I would then, imagine that's an incredible. <coughs> yeah. I was I was real thrilled to get to work with him and, and uh, I was real happy with that song and he cut it on Buddy Guy uh -huh. when he was producing Buddy Guy right after we had written it. Uh, uh, but uh, but it, it, it really holds up for me and uh, and I really it, we haven't had, I haven't gotten back to Nashville since so we haven't gotten a chance to write together again but I sure I sure enjoy working with him I'm a big fan of his he's one of my writing heroes for sure and do you do you prefer do you find that you prefer to write alone or write with somebody or the process I would think would be a lot different I, I enjoy writing with people uh, I like the feedback I've often said uh, I, the thing about writing alone is you you have your it, it's your own schedule your own all your own input but writing with somebody else for instance writing with Jim Belushi he, he was not a songwriter but he had a TV show and we were doing the music for it. Sure. I mean, you know, hey, one of the one of the things Gary Nicholson always said to me is write with the folks. You know, if they've got something going on, try to write with them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, work and, with what's going on, yeah. And, I, and, I, and so I remember working <laughs> working with Jim and, and sometimes the people that aren't, that aren't, you, you, if you work with somebody that's really, uh, that's been doing it a long time, they're kind of jaded and they're going to pick everything apart, every idea. Gen and they and they're real careful about what they throw out because they don't want to be you know oh sure. that's terrible. But but Jim would throw anything out there, and we were sitting at his place, uh, and he had a gal working for him named Dana, who's a dear friend. But Dana yelled out something to him about somebody was upset with him, and uh, and he said, "Well, tell him I tell him I said it was the truth at the time." And I said, <laughs> The truth that that's oh, a great talent. That is a, yeah. I don't think we did that song on this <laughs> show. But it's a great blue. It was like, 
Man, there's our time. It was the yeah, truth. Yeah, there the you time. go. When I told you I loved you, it was the truth. Truth at the, at the time. <laughs> that's a yeah. That is a very good. That's good. That and so, good that, so writing, it, it's you don't have to know what you're doing, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, if you've got to, you've got to. Once you get the idea, you got to stay with it and get it complete and complete the idea. But out of the babes, out of the mouths of babes, you know. Sure, sure. Well, it, it brings that fresh new approach. So, like you said, if you're in the business a long time, sometimes we do tend to get jaded by things. Oh, you do. Um, and it kind of brings the, back that freshness to you of when you were new, when you're with somebody that's new too. Of there's that yeah. spark. Yeah. They're excited. Yeah, they're, yeah they, they are. You know, I, I, I work with a, really a dear friend and a great writer, Richard Feldman, very successful. And you'd be working on something. He says, "That sucks." You know. <laughs> Yeah, well, great. Really just deflate, yeah, exactly. Right? Just <laughs> takes all the air out of your balloons. That's what that I do sucks. now. <laughs> all righty, folks. We are talking about this weekend, the tenth annual Cana Wind Fort Worth Blues Fest coming up on Sunday at Lola Saloon over in Fort Worth, as the name would suggest. Um, this is this is the event that I put together for Cana Wind every year, so it's very close to my heart. I am very, very picky about the bands that I pick for this. Um, I try to do a good mix of local Fort Worth guys and guys from over in Dallas and some stuff that hasn't been there before and some hometown favorites. And I know you guys have seen the lineup. So I think I put together a pretty good lineup for oh, this yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what it also is, is the kind of event where everybody can come and hang out. So you can come and hang out and see other artists that maybe you haven't seen in a while, your yeah, pals. Because yeah, yeah. people don't understand this that are not in a band and don't play. They think we all maybe live in the same apartment complex and see each other every day, <laughs> which is a cool and yet frightening prospect in its own. Um, but really, when you're playing a lot, you don't get to see yeah. a lot of the other musicians. So this is a chance for the musicians to do their thing and then hang out and see everybody else yeah. that's going to be there. And that's I know, great. Glenn, you were saying that you were looking forward to seeing a couple of the guys that are oh, on this absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Uh, buddy, for sure, buddy. We'd have been sure. on case, man. Before I forget, I want to also give a shout out to our, our dear friend, my dear friend, James Pennebecker, who also played guitar on our record and added, added so much to it with uh, some backgrounds and guitar as well. But I, I'm really looking forward to Sunday and, and the whole lineup, like you mentioned, well, I uh, I, some, there's a, I think there's going to be a surprise guest uh, person that I'm, I, I'm really interested in hearing. There is, and, I, and I'm and i doing him the... He's agreed to do it for me, but he's got a big gig the night before, so I'm trying not to mess up his ticket sales by mentioning it. Right. It's that kind of a mm -hmm. thing, but I'm very excited, and he'll be... Uh, people will be happy to see him there, for sure. I'm excited to, I'm um, excited to hear him. And today, um, I got uh, Dylan Bishop and... Wes race together and Wes is going to get Wes. up and do one of his beat poems oh, good. during Dylan's Wes set. Wes and I go back to the Wichita days when he was a Wichita guy. He lived there, you know. And, and uh, Cadillac yeah. and Dylan, I'm really I'm yeah, yeah, excited yeah, to hear them cool. as well. That'd oh yeah, cool. that, that, uh, Dylan is, we were talking about that earlier, you know, 20 years old and he yeah. just, you just look at him and go, how yeah. are you this amazing? He, Wes, but Wes and a friend of his named Jim Young put together the first show that I think we played. I was in Juke Jumpers at the time, it was late 70s. And it was a little place called The Spot. It wasn't much bigger than this room. It was us and Albert Collins. And we got there, and they said, well, the show starts at 2. <laughs> and, and Albert goes on at 4. Oh, my God. And that was real. And I thought, oh, God, this is, you know, there's no But way. that does sound like the kind of place that Wes it, would hang well, out. You, yeah, <laughs> right. and you, you couldn't that. put a person, I mean, not only in the room, but around the building and outside the building. I mean, it was it yeah. was just nuts. It was, you know, it was a, it was a, a promoted thing outside of the club that Jim and Wes put together, mm -hmm. and it just exploded. I mean, it was a huge thing, but it was like dawn when we were, you know, loading out. Where was it? <laughs> Wichita, Kansas. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Wes is from Wichita, Kansas. And Wes is one of those guys that he is a pot stirrer and an instigator in the very best way. Oh, yeah, no, he, he really is. He is always out there making cool stuff happen. For years, he we, he had the nickname 3D West because he used to wear those 3D glasses, right? One blue lens and one red lens. <laughs> <laughs> He's just A lot of great players came out of that area. Yes. Yeah, this Mike, yeah. you know, Finnegan, Mike Finnegan, a lot. I mean, the oh, gosh, yeah. goes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um... So yeah, so he's not on the schedule, but he'll be over there as well good, too. So good. and there'll be some other guests that'll be popping up on things too. And I always encourage guys, you know, if you don't have a gig that day, come on by. And sometimes that prompts 
um, impromptu, hey, I'm going to get up and sing this song with this band, I'm going to do whatever, because it is that very communal kind of event, and that's what I hope for yeah, on this kind of thing. Great, great, great. It's great. So we have Glenn Clark here in the studio with us right now. We are talking, folks, if you've just tuned in, the show's almost over. Where have you been? Um, we are talking about this Sunday, the 10th annual Cana Wind Fort Worth Blues Festival. 10th annual. Jackie Don and I were talking about that because Jackie's played all of them for me, and I just can't believe it's we're at 10 already. That's amazing. This was the, this was the little, little festival that um, they said couldn't happen, that... Um, I'm going to put him on the barbecue here. The station manager here at Cana Wind said, we can't do anything in Fort Worth. Fort Worth won't support us. Mm. Wrong! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good on you. Wrong about that. You Fort Worth supports us. It is a great event. Because people in Fort Worth would always tell me every time I'd go over, they'd say, we love Cana Wind, but why do you do all your events in Dallas? Yeah. Why don't you do anything over here? Well, it's a, this is a one giant metroplex we just need to get used to that it, it <laughs> is it is but you know uh, dallas people would drive to fort worth fort worth people do not want to drive to dallas they just don't want to do it i hear this from them all the time yeah. so this is your event fort worth this is the event that you ask for and you have kept it going and now it's in its 10th year so we certainly hope to see all of you out there um are you going to have copies of the cd for sale at the we event? sure will okay yeah, we sure will yes. um and i know we're going to bring some uh, extra copies out there of the new buddy magazine with the story about you in there Good. so uh, maybe you would autograph those for people if they ask sure yeah do that kind of thing i'm so, gonna i plan on hanging around i'm, okay. I'm planning on getting early getting there early and, and seeing a number of acts so cool. i'm gonna i'm planning on uh making a day of it on the scene i'm sorry he's on the scene on the scene on the scene <laughs>